Hello and thank you for tuning in to Assets Tech Tips. Um, I have just upgraded the firmware on my Asus RTN 56U to a custom firmware which adds some really really fantastic features. Uh, for those of you who would like to upgrade your Asus router to this firmware, I'm just going to very quickly walk you through the steps. Even though I've just finished doing this, um, I would like to quickly sh just show you step by step, point and click, what you need to do so that you have a better understanding. So the first step is to download the firmware, which you can do by going to Google typing in Merlin's Tower it will be the first link that you see here and that's what we're looking for this firmware supports all of these devices here so what I do on my screen will apply to you if you have an N16, an N66, an AC66 or an AC56. So you can follow my instructions without too much hassle. Um, have a read through here first, just so that you know what you're getting. It adds some really, really nice features, uh, if I may say so myself. I'm in it for the OpenVPN, which is missing on Asus's stock latest stock firmware so this is why I would like to get it and got to say pretty cool I haven't set it up yet but you can see here we've got the options so have a quick read through this I do recommend reading through the documentation there's a, a lot of great features for the downloads you want to go to this link here And I would recommend downloading the README and this here, all models. But you don't need to download all models, it's just, it's, I found it a little easier just to select the two files, zip them and send them. Click on download, it'll ask you, are you sure you want to zip these two items? Yes, and it'll do it for you and present you with a link. Like this. Just hit OK and download. The next step make a backup of your configuration go down to administration over to restore and choose to save your settings click on save choose a location of your choice give it a good name or leave the name the way it is and click on OK to do your saving this is a, a good idea if you are if you've made any changes to your router, any configurational changes, port forwarding, anything like that, um, do make a backup. Then, once your download has finished and you have the file in question, which will look like this. This will be the firmware. This is the one which I chose to upgrade with on the 1st of November. So basically all you do is click on firmware upgrade, new firmware file, browse, browse to the location of where it is. select the file, click on open and then choose upload. Go make a tea, it'll take about three minutes or so, give or take. Uh, and once it's finished, you will be looking at this screen here. The only thing I will say to you is, I've noticed, maybe I'm incorrect, maybe I don't fully understand what this, I have sent an email to the Merlin crew pointing this out to them. My IP is 192.168.17.1. This here displays 192.168.1.1. It's not accurate. I don't know why it's not accurate. It could be a bug. 
an email has been sent, maybe it might be fixed in future. So pay no attention to that. Um, once you've uploaded, your settings should be similar to what they were before, but I would still anyway recommend restoring the configuration file which you just saved by going back down to administration, clicking on restore, restore settings, choose the file that you want to upload, click on open, upload, just like the firmware, give it a minute, it's a little bit quicker, and that will save Sorry, that will restore all of your configurational changes such as fixed DHCP entries, ports that are forwarded, uh, any kind of configuration changes that you've done. And it really is quite as simple as that. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to look at all of the new features in this new firmware too closely yet. I'm going to have a play around and I might do, yeah you can see I'm up an hour, and I might do a video later on to point out all of the new features but at the moment the ones that I see, the ones that I'm interested in are the sys, the sys info page, the open VPN server and client settings for a more secure VPN connection and I do like the way that they have added oops, I'm looking at the wrong place okay, here LAN, DHCP server, scroll down here, this is where you enter in your fixed DHCP reservations brilliant by the way, you should use it if you've got a laptop or something like that but they've added in a name section which is really cool this was missing before so now I know that this MAC address which is my PC will always end up being this IP when my PC is in the network to better explain this to you you've got a laptop you do torrent downloads with your laptop and you've got it configured in a way where your torrent client has a port that is forwarded to a specific IP address which is your laptop when your laptop is in your local area connection sorry local area network when your laptop is out of the house connects to a different wireless gets a completely different IP and so on when you bring your laptop back into your house and you want to continue using your torrent client to download you would need to set the IP to what it was before, the one that you're using, to port forward to. That's a pain. Therefore, you use this here. So you take the MAC address of your, of your notebook and you say, I want my notebook to be 192.168.17.100. So every single time the wireless chip on your laptop is within the vicinity of the wireless network connection that you have configured this on your laptop says give me an IP address and it says oh there's the MAC address I know you I'm gonna give you exactly that IP so every single time you get the same IP you don't need to keep changing it for all of the configured ports which you have forwarded to that IP it's quite nice and now because you guys don't know what any of these are I do because I've put them in a few times but it's a pain. So now I can enter in a name like how cool is that? So well done to the boys in Merlin for adding that in. That is a really nice feature. I know it's not the most advanced one out there but even sometimes the smallest little things make the biggest differences. And uh, yeah, another thing I noticed was the dual LAN. I'm not sure if that was in any of the latest because the one that I had previously was a little bit old but um, really really nice job very happy with it I hope that they can change this little piece here another thing I'd like to point out to you is the documentation which they have supplied for this firmware is just brilliant and I would recommend that you have a good read of it 
here it is here it is a bit long but you can jump through to the sections that you wish to um, all of their change logs everything that they have included they've even put in some links to stuff for instance like the open VPN it's not within their area to explain to people how to set up an open VPN connection so what they've done is they've added in links to make it a little easier for you to do that so you can link pop find the info so personally I thank you to them for that I'm happy about that Yes, I'm happy with that. So, thank you all for watching. Um, any questions? Send me an email. If you have, uh, if you're having difficulty doing something and you need a little bit of help, please do not hesitate to also again send me an email. I'm more than happy to help you uh, in any way I can. For any kind of feedback, constructive if possible, please do leave your comments. I love your comments. And again. Thank you for watching. Take care.